Hello everyone, this is Osboy HT with a brand new video for you here today. In the following video, join me as we cover some of the most unique and interesting countries in Imperator Rome. These countries feature interesting starts, with unconventional mechanics, cultures, and religions predominating in their respective regions. Ranging from isolated cultures and obscure subject states, to nomadic hordes and formable nations lost to history, join me today as we dive in and explore the most interesting countries in 304 BC. Let's get started with number 10. Starting off our list of most interesting nations is the Proto-Irish tribe of Alicia at number 10. If your idea of a unique and fun campaign is playing the only Gaelic cultured nation in the game, the luck of the Irish is behind your back. Starting with only two cities and five pops, Ulicia is well positioned in the northeast of the island of Ireland, and more than capable of building up an army to invade and expand into Scotland and the wider British Isles. With the entirety of Ireland open to colonization, Ulicia can expand peacefully and settle their tribe once either your population grows organically, which is boring, or once you accumulate enough slaves from your neighbors and culture convert them, which is far more exciting. Given that you start as a settled tribe, you will periodically receive events to increase or decrease your centralization, which will in turn allow you to reform into a migratory tribe or into an autocratic monarchy. No matter what course of action you decide to take, be sure to culturally convert all of the provinces you conquer, as none of the other nations in 304 BC share your Hibernian culture. Luckily for you though, is that all of the nations in France and the wider British Isles share your religion, which will afford you 100% religious unity throughout most of your campaign, and allows you to focus on converting everyone to your strange ways and potato-based diet. Are you a fan of the Temple of Broden? Do you even lift Amikai? Coming in at number 9 on our list of most interesting nations is the ripped and buff nation of Gymnasia, a feudatory subject state of Carthage centered along the Balearic Islands. Featuring a bizarre child-sacrificing religion and an equally unique phonatio carthaginian culture, Gymnasia offers players a campaign that is sure to be swole and unorthodox. Starting with 6 cities and 33 pops, Gymnasia will have to contend with Carthage if they are to become independent, which promises players a challenging and difficult early game war. My advice for any aspiring gym leader is to hire additional cohorts, and declare war on Carthage when they are busy fighting in another theater. An easy task, as Carthage is sure to be the target of Iberian, Sardinian, or Sicilian tribes in the early game. With an army of at least 12,000 men and terrain modifiers on your side, any landing party that attempts to party in Ibiza will be smited by Balhamun, ensuring you sovereignty and independence in your first peace deal. After you are free from the Hannibals, your future depends upon your creativity, and you can establish Canaanite Phoenician gems across the Mediterranean and spread CrossFit to the wider Greco-Roman world. Arising as the spiritual free Tibet of antiquity is Zhang Zhang at number 8 on our list of most fascinating nations in Imperator Rome. With more than 40 cities and 200 pops, Zhang Zhang is a powerful regional nation, and more than capable of absorbing and invading Tsang and any neighboring Central Asian tribes within their immediate vicinity. Moreover, Zhang Zhang's unique religion of Ban is shared only by fellow Central Asians, rendering their proto-Tibetan Buddhist faith rare and bizarre in 304 BC. Although they benefit from weak neighbors and easy expansion paths, Zhang Zhang also borders the strongest nation in the game, Moria. It is imperative then that a Tibetan player maintains positive relations with their Indian neighbor, in order to ensure that you are not wiped from the map and that the future Dalai and Panchen Lamas have a place to call their second home. Fortunately for Zhang Zhang, China is not in game yet, but if the region is ever added in future expansions or downloadable content, Zhang Zhang will be the prime contender to form the nation of Tibet and ensure their place in history. For those of you curious about Moria and the other most powerful nations in Imperator Rome, I humbly offer you a card in the top right of your screen to check out last week's video that covered this very topic. If flags alone could dictate the power of a nation, the Cappadocian Kingdom of Pontus would reign supreme. Coming in at number 7 on our list of most interesting nations, Pontus is a formidable Anatolian power, with a massive starting army of 29 cohorts that can easily outmatch all of their neighbors. With the majority of Asia Minor belonging to the antagonist kingdom of Phrygia and their dependencies, Pontus's position as a strong and independent Anatolian nation offers the player an interesting and challenging campaign. Boasting a sizable population of 279 pops and 29 cities, Pontus also features one of the best rulers in the game, whose stats and youth allow the nation to flourish from the very start of your campaign, 
although he is not immune to poison and is certainly no Mithridates. Furthermore, with their culture of Cappadocian belonging to the Persian culture group, Pontus can also reform the nation of Persia, giving you free claims across Asia and an additional military, civic, oratory, and religious idea policy. If your idea of fun is playing unique nations and you are a sworn enemy of Rome, skip Pocahontas and pick a Pontus instead. Mixing and displacing their culture and religion into number 6 on our list of most interesting nations is the Plutocratic Republic of Massilia, located along the southern coast of Gaul and the ancestral city-state of modern-day Marseille. Massilia is a one-of-a-kind Greco-Hellenic nation surrounded by the Druidic tribes of Astelix and Abolix. With a sizable trading economy consisting of 44 pops spread across four cities and three separate non-contiguous regions, Massilia starts the campaign in 304 BC as a formidable naval power and is protected by a defensive pact with the two other Greek colonial nations of Emporion and Hemeroscoporion. Given that your foreign religion and culture will afford you free friends in the Gallic neighborhood and given your proximity to the rising power of Rome, a Massilian campaign is as challenging as it is rewarding and offers players the ability to play as one of the most unique nations of the Hellenic periphery. My advice for players interested in starting a campaign with this city-state is to expand as fast as possible, before the neighboring Gauls form alliances and defensive pack chains that will severely limit your expansion opportunities. Overall, Massilia has offered me personally the most fun campaign I've yet to experience in Imperator Rome, all due to the fact that their native neighbors will constantly declare war on you and keep you thinking on your toes. Yahweh, we're halfway through our list and it's time to announce the fifth most interesting nation in Imperator Rome, Judea. The strongest and most economically advanced of the only two Jewish nations in game, Judea is a Hebrew theocratic monarchy and provides players one of the most challenging starts in 304 BC. With 20 cities and 110 pops, Judea is underrated and a surprisingly strong regional Levantine power. The only thing preventing Judea from being able to expand at the game's start is ironically the only thing protecting them from near certain annihilation. They are a tributary to Phrygia and pay their Diodaki overlord every month to protect them from Egypt and Babylonian captivity. If and when a player revokes their tributary status, they expose themselves to annexation from two of the strongest nations in the game, but they can also expand and overtake their neighbors with some tactics and RNG on their side. To that end, I've included in this video a card at the top right of your screen to a guide for playing and succeeding as Judea, which provides step-by-step -step strategies for surviving, growing, and ultimately obtaining the Kingdom of Jerusalem achievement. Ultimately, if you're the type of player who enjoys challenging nations that start in incredibly unfavorable positions, Judea might just be the country for Jew. Greeks and your Latin Peninsula? It's more likely than you might think. Tyrannically imposing their way into number 4 in our list of most interesting nations is the autocratic monarchy of Syracuse. Composing approximately half the territorial extent of the island of Sicily and with two vassal states on the Italian mainland, Syracuse is in an ideal position to retake Sicily from Carthage and the indigenous Sicilians, cementing Hellenic rule over Magna Graecia. With a sizable starting economy composed of 8 cities and 122 pops, and with a powerful leader to rule them, Syracuse can swiftly and easily conquer their surrounding neighbors, uniting and forming the nation of Sicily in under 10 years. Additionally, Syracuse can also form Magna Graecia, after conquering key ports of southern Italia, and can even reunite Alexander's former Argiad Empire, since they are of Hellenic culture which bestows powerful and permanent bonuses and claims that last the duration of the entire campaign. Furthermore, Syracuse has the potential to emerge as a naval superpower, with numerous ports providing them the potential to challenge the maritime powers of Greece, Carthage, and Rome, and wrest control of the Mediterranean under the Triskelion Gorgon flag. If you're in the market for Hellenic colonies with fast-paced early game warfare and the potential for forming powerful countries, the tyrants of Syracuse will give you a run for your money. Clinging onto life support is the Phoenician rump state of Byblos at number 3 on our list of most interesting nations. Although long past their expiration date, the remnants of the ancient purple dye traders still survive as a tributary to their Diodaki overlord Phrygia, 
a state that completely envelops their territory. Their extreme difficulty, that necessitates Phrygian explosions, coupled with their unique Canaanite and Phoenician identity, render Byblos and the other city-states of Phoenicia some of the most intriguing nations to play in game. Often overlooked by their former colony of Carthage, the Phoenician city-states offer the player the ability to tech up ridiculously quickly and surpass their huge neighbors in science and military technology. This is because their low amount of pops, coupled with their high percentage of citizens, allow you to obtain 300% research efficiency after only promoting a few freemen to citizens at the start of your campaign. With some targeted assassinations and inspiring disloyal governors to ensure a Phrygian civil war or succession crisis, a shrewd and cunning player can use their economic and technological advantages to overwhelm the Phrygians and sign for an early peace. If Balhamun favors you and you are somehow able to conquer Lower and Upper Phoenicia and take back the legendary city of Tyre, you can reform into the nation of Phoenicia. After you form this nation, you receive a variety of benefits and claims, and can also obtain the Tyrian Purple Achievement, assuming of course that you are able to recruit 500 triremes and control 5 dye producing provinces. If you are interested in a step-by-step -step guide to playing, succeeding, and obtaining this achievement as Phoenicia, be sure to check back next week when the Byblos Guide is released on this channel. It might already be out, so be sure to check the top right of your screen, and click the card for this video if you are dying to form Phoenicia for yourself. Nearing the top of our list of most intriguing nations in Imperator Rome is the Greco-Iranian satrapy of Bactria at number 2. Starting the game as a subject state of the Seleucid Empire and nestled along the easternmost periphery of Alexander's former empire, Bactria offers players an unusual blend of western and eastern cultures and the familiar difficulty of, well, pretty much every nation so far mentioned on this list. This is due to the fact that if you are somehow able to break away from your overlord, which is arguably the second most powerful nation in the game, you are still almost completely surrounded by Moria undeniably the most powerful nation in 304 BC. Luckily for you though is that you start the campaign with 99 cities, more than 1,100 pops, and an incredibly competent starting ruler. Despite your huge population and economic potential however, almost all of your population belongs to foreign cultures and religions, which all but forces you to assign your governors to culturally convert every province you own. After a few decades of waiting, your population will largely be Macedonian, and the Seleucids will invariably collapse or embroil themselves in a war with Moria, providing you the perfect opportunity to declare independence from your former master. From there, Bactria can reclaim Alexander's legacy and form the Argia Empire, much like the other Hellenic Diodaki, which provide permanent bonuses to your nation. On the other hand, players interested in expanding eastwards can declare a Greco-Indian kingdom by decision, offering Bactria permanent bonuses to diplomatic reputation and cultural acceptance, if they control all cities in the northern Indian region of Madra. Likewise, achievement-minded players can obtain the Man Who Could Be King achievement by conquering the regions of Ariana, Bactria, and Gandhara. We've made it to the end of our list, and it's time to migrate our way to the most interesting nation in Imperator Rome. In a somewhat surprising twist, there are several tribes who tie their way into the number one position, and it isn't because they have bizarre religions, cultures, or even starting positions. No, the reason why all migratory tribes are the most unique and fun countries to play is that they are able to convert their pops into nomadic soldiers that have the potential to colonize and settle any province in the game. Vandals and Visigoths take note. Your tribe can colonize empty land and even take control and settle enemy territory if you declare war and occupy said province. Before planning your next summer getaway on the Palatine Hills and roasting Rome to the ground, however, please be aware that transforming all of your provinces and pops into nomadic warriors changes your government form into a migratory horde, although you are still allowed to declare war and let the bodies hit the floor. Personally, I am fond of Seratia and the Scythian migratory tribes, and the idea of bringing Iranians to Western Europe and the Netherlands a few thousand years early is highly appealing. I was, however, destroyed in this campaign by Germanic tribes after settling Belgium, so you might be better off if you start as a more populated and powerful tribe, or if you start off as a Swabian or Germanic tribe and colonize the Black Sea. Regardless, any migratory tribe can easily net players the new home achievement in an Iron Man campaign. And certain tribes, like the Scythians, can also form the nations of Dahe and Parthia if they conquer and settle key Iranic and Central Asian provinces. We've reached the end of the video, and I'd like to thank everyone for watching. 
A special shout-out goes to my patrons on Patreon that support the channel and enable me to produce quality content on a regular basis. That concludes my top picks for the most interesting nations in Imperator Rome. What nations have you enjoyed playing? Do you have any recommendations for future Imperator content? Please let me know in the comment box below. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like or a comment, as these will really help the channel grow. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.